Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is our Community Matters series. And we're talking today about reaching out to voters before Election Day, November 3rd. Okay, don't forget to vote every way you can. Uh, I don't mean mo vote more than once, though. I mean, make sure to vote. That's what I mean. Okay, <clears throat> this is Barry Freeman. Barry Freeman joins us from New Jersey. He's a retired educator. And we'll find out more about him as we go through the discussion. Barry, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Jay. I have had the privilege of seeing some of your recorded uh, broadcasts, and I'm looking forward to this event. Ah, the same here. So what's really, you know, what I love about this show is that you, you're doing what I would have liked to do. Maybe I still will do. A lot of people I would know. You know, one of the things is that if you're a Democrat and you want to see Biden win, do something. You can write a check if you want, make sure you send it the right place. Um, or you could get on the phone and or. Uh, and you can make calls. You can make calls anywhere in the country. You could be part of a, a phone a phone bank uh, and uh, talk to people about how they're going to vote. And and Barry is doing what I think a lot of people should be doing. He's on the phone bank, and he went to do that. He's a kind of a masochist, and he went to do that. And I and I, I wanted to exp explore his experience and how he got involved in that. How they taught him how to do it. How he is doing it, what he learned from it. It's, this is so lush. This is a lush subject. So Barry, tell us, why did you do this? And how did you get you know, into it? How did you train up for it? Oh my goodness, they're great questions. I could go on for hours, but I'll try and do it in two minutes. Uh, I'm a recently retired tenured professor from a large community college. And I think we're in September, I was missing, you know, a couple of classes of bright, eager minds, and I, I needed to give I needed to give a lecture. I needed to communicate with people, and being a strong Biden supporter, scared to death over Trump, I said to myself, "Why don't I get off my butt and do something other than giving money to see if I can help Joe Biden by?" communicating with voters on the phone because I'm a pretty good communicator, I think. I'll so vouch for that. I volunteered, I thank you. So I volunteered to do it. And then, you know, it, it, it was a unique experience. I never fully understood what it was. I had some ideas, but it's a tough, wonderful, uh, 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 project to do. I'm happy I did it. So yeah, you had some trouble getting into the uh, the training program. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah. The training program, it was really a thrilling event in and of itself. So I went on, you, by the way, I'll, I'll give a pitch to the Democratic National Committee website. If you go and just put in 2020, 2020 victory dot I, lowercase i, dot O, slash, make calls. If you, you know, after this conversation I'm having with Jay, if you're interested in doing it, go for it. It will be a life-altering, changing experience. So the first thing you do is they say you need to sign up for a training session. And there, I mean, there's got to be at least half a dozen or more every day. And so I tried once, and just as I tried to get on, it got filled up. And they didn't tell me, oh, I tried again. It was filled up. I, I finally got on into a training call session, and that was like the next day. And it was in an odd time, which had not filled up. I got on to this thing, you know, a couple minutes early, and the trainer, is a millennial, more words per minute person talking, a lovely, bright, intelligent, sensitive, good young woman, probably early 30s. And she is sort of the cheerleader, the team leader and cheerleader. And she says, oh my goodness, we have 500 people signed on already. Say hello to your other callers who are in the training session. And so there's a chat thing. And I mean, can you imagine what happens when 500 people start chatting at the same time? Fabulous. 
and there are people, from, you know, all over the country. And everybody's saying, hi, it's great, we're looking for, and then we get right around to the start time and someone else says, Melissa, we now have 1,500 people in the training session and we're getting ready to close it out. So they closed it out at 1,700 people, all at various times on the chat board, but Melissa maintained order and took us through the elaborate telephone calling process. So the training center session, I think was already, you felt like you were with a group of interested, caring Biden supporters who like Barry Freeman, were just trying to do something more other than write a check. Well, what did she train you in? Did it, how to conduct a telephone call, how to deal with various uh, scenarios? Yeah, it, uh, and it's an elaborate system. I mean, I robocalling to the nth degree. So you never make a phone call, you never dial anything yourself, but the machine does it for you. All you do is hit a button and say, next call. And then you wait about 15, 20 seconds and someone says, hello, that person's name is up in the left-hand corner of your screen and you got a script in front of you. And you say, hello, good afternoon. My name is Barry. I'm a volunteer for the Democratic National Committee. And I, and usually at that point, the phone is hung up. <laughs> <laughs> or not always, but it, it seemed like around two thirds of the time. So being a College professor for 34 years, I'm pretty good on my feet, and I certainly do ad living with my students in class. So forgive me, DNC, but I modified the script a little. <laughs> and, and what I did was I said, hello, this is Barry. I'm a volunteer, didn't say Democratic National Committee, and I'm doing a survey that would just take you one minute to complete. And that get I, you a better result? Marginally, marginally. Uh, to fully respond, I have to jump to the conclusions and the final percentages of what happened. But um, for me personally, when I got someone who said, I'm voting for Joe Biden, and I would say, that's wonderful. I'm with you. And some of those conversations, those, you know, some people hung up and other people, I couldn't get them off the phone to make the next auto dialing thing. Because <laughs> they, I, I, I encountered many passionate Joe Biden supporters. And it was interesting to me because a number, I, I called into three different states. I didn't call, but the auto dialer got me calling. So if I called early in the morning or in the early afternoon, I sort of got every time New York, Long Island, could be upstate New York, Syracuse, a couple calls. Then if I waited till the later in the afternoon, I think it was because of time zones, uh, I was calling, uh, the dialer was dialing Ohio and totally different Ohio. And then if I called in the evening after dinner, if I still hadn't had enough pain from making these calls, although joy and pain, uh, I then got California. And, and that too was another experience. And, so you know, what, what was different about Ohio though, Barry? Uh, you, you lowered your voice and I wonder what you meant. By that. <laughs> it just wasn't as lively as New York. <laughs> New York was different because that's where I encountered the greatest number of answering machines ah. and the phone, the automatic dialer, you know, it connected. Yeah. So then I'd have to sit there and listen to the run on answering machine. And I, you know, left a little pro Biden uh, message for the, the machine. What would you say? I would say, I'm so sorry. I missed you. And I wish I had the opportunity to tell you a bit about Joe Biden and why he is honest 
and trustworthy and reliable, as opposed to Donald Trump, who's wacko, narcissist, <laughs> and really not too smart. I mean, I, I could have gotten more of the <laughs> intense, but I, you know. <clears throat> Did you leave a number for them to call you back? Could you do that? Uh, no, I couldn't. But this, this is interesting, really interesting, Jay. There were, of all 100 calls, you know, by the way, the number of hangups was 59%. 59% hangups. But of the 100 calls, 23 were Biden supporters. And what I found was, I mean, at the very end of that, the script says, tr try to ask them if they would be willing to make phone calls on behalf of Biden, if they would volunteer to be part of a training group. Yeah. And three people did volunteer. Furthermore, in order, I'm, I was required to, and I succeeded. One of my major accomplishments, they have to give me their email address, their full name, and their home phone number. And I don't know about you, Jay, but I don't think <laughs> no, no, I would care to do that. A lot of information, really. A lot of information for Barry, a volunteer calling from uh, New Jersey. Must be your style, Barry. Perhaps. I've often thought I should have been selling life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but those calls were truly exciting. And I felt it restored my faith in humanity and, you know, sort of counterbalanced the majority of hang-up calls. And to be honest with you and your listeners, I've got to say, I mean, how many times have, have I picked up the call, it was a, and just hang it up. And you don't, you don't want to say anything because it's just, it's a waste of time in 99% of the case, I mean, I've hung up on a couple of my physician's nurses. <laughs> if they don't, they're not clear and say who they are and why they're calling, you know, and I get a robocall or many of the confirm your appointment things are robocalls. I just hang up. Yeah. So you, you probably hang up to anything that, that smacks of that 100% of the time. And, and so I, I wouldn't be dismayed if it was only 52% of the time. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like they were agreeable to talk to you, but it also sounds like <clears throat> your list did not include any Trumpers. Am I right? I, I didn't know that, but as you mentioned it, Jay, I, I think you're on, you're on the money. And I think these were registered Democrats and they were still turned off by the idea of a survey or a poll or an unsolicited phone call but uh, I never I mean it had to be because I never encountered even when I deviated from the script and I said I'm a volunteer I'm doing a political survey not mentioning Democratic National Party and I just want to ask you questions for one minute. And I thought if one of those people I had reached and given that line were Trump supporters, they would have gone for the bait and said, uh, no, I'm for Trump and you know, we gotta get Trump because he's so smart. <laughs> And, and you know, he's so honest and he's never told a lie. You know? <laughs> Being but you didn't have that experience. No, no, there was never your your observation is correct. There was never a Trumper or a Trump leaning person that I encountered in the hundred phone calls that the robo dialer dialed for me. From well, I was I was telling you that in my own experience, um, these numbers and names that that come up on the robocaller or, or on the list that is given to somebody who makes calls like this are names of, say, registered Democrats, registered Democrats. Correct. So the inclination would be that this person would be a Democrat. Um, and if you were on the other side of the coin, uh, you'd be getting a list of uh, registered Republicans. 
So the likelihood for a Republican, Republican would be Trump, the likelihood of Democrat would be Biden. And the purpose uh, I was telling you, at least as far as I understood, is that the calls, at least uh, the ones from the DNC, are intended to confirm uh, a, a pre-inclination by that voter. Uh, if he's inclined to vote for Trump, uh, rather Biden, um, then your job is to confirm that and make that ever clear, you know, uh, and take away any ambivalence about it. Reinforce uh, it, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I've got a, a one minute funny story that validates what you're saying. And it happened to me personally where I live in a community, it's a fairly well-to-do community with two acres zoning in Northern New Jersey. And everyone in this town is Republican. <laughs> so if I have to, if I want to register, if I want to vote for the mayor or the town council, critical positions in this small town, then I have to be a registered Republican. So here's another thing I'm confessing to. You can't tell the DNC I deviated from the script and you can't tell my blessed mother in, in the memory of the, that I registered as a Republican because she killed me. But it's the only way, mom, that I could vote in the town. For the, Is this a great country or what? <laughs> But the point of the whole story and all that background information is I'm a, re a registered Republican on that, on the rolls. And so I got a caller confirming my plan to vote for Trump. And that poor guy got a mouthful. <laughs> I never had so much fun in my whole life. I said to this guy, you know, sir, I've got to tell you, you are a very intelligent person. I can see you're well educated. How can you support Trump? Said, what do you mean? What do you mean? And, and then I took him through the litany of, you know, a, a 20 major bankruptcies of Trump University ripping off poor people, of, of lying and cheating and being a con man. And in the, in the end, he hung up on me. He couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, that does show you, though, this whole idea about only calling people who are registered in, in the party that has asked you to make the call. <clears throat> it's that divisiveness. You're not, you're not really in a position to try to change anybody's mind, only to reconfirm what is already in that person's mind. Um, you know, like Felix Frankfurter said, one decides on the basis of what is already in one's mind. I recall. It's the same thing here. <clears throat> and I really wonder, you know, A, that reflects the divisiveness in our country, because mm -hmm. that's the way these calls have been made a long time already. Yep. Um, but B... Um, you, you, we live in our own little, little bubble, and we can't. We, we really can't get anybody to cross over. Uh, I, I do want you to talk about your own efforts, uh, whether as a caller or just somebody who talks to people. Your own efforts to change somebody's mind, um, to to get somebody who is a Trumper to vote for Biden. How, how has that gone for you, Barry? It's been extraordinarily difficult, but. Barry being Barry, very persistent, and I've had some difficult students in my classes who I have been able to bring around. You know, some ran out and left, but others I was able to transform. Um, personally, I have had a number of friends, you know, for a long, I had one friend, Phil. I don't think he's listening, but he lives in Oyster Bay, Long Island. There's a beautiful house overlooking Long Island Sound and a lovely sailboat that we used together right down on the waterfront there. Phil was a diehard Trump supporter. His wife was not, Peggy was not. And she said, Barry, you gotta do something to help me out. He, I don't know what he, and that went on for a couple of years. And I would send him stuff occasionally, and he would almost always reject it and send it back. And I, 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 God's honest truth, this is about four weeks ago, Phil sent me an email saying, Barry, I've had it with the Trump. He's 
putting, he's killing himself and I just can't be part of it anymore. You know, Joe may be starting with dementia, <laughs> but I need an honest guy. I need a trustworthy guy. I, I, I'm, I'm off the Trump thing. So Very interesting. That's, that's, a, that's a dream email. You know, we should all get those emails by the, by the hundreds of thousands, uh, but we're not. Um, so in that case, you were able to prevail. I mean, able to advocate successfully. Any other cases? I have another one, uh, a retired marketing buddy living on Cape Cod. And when Trump got elected, his, his name is also Phil, a different Phil, um, lives in Mashpee on the Cape near Hyannis. Phil said, you know, I'm not sure about this guy, but I voted for him to shake things up. And we need some fresh blood in Washington. You know, it's just, it's dying. Well, Phil and I continued to email back and forth. And I said, Phil, did you see this? How, I mean, well, you know, let's see. And let's see, well, Phil is no longer voting for Trump. And I can't tell you the specific point in time but uh, he's an older gentleman in his uh, mid 80s, sharp as a tack, living on his own, driving, going to the supermarket. And he said, I can't live with Trump anymore. Yeah, look at the Lincoln Project, you know? Oh. <clears throat> Those guys are Republicans. They, a lot of them probably voted for Trump in 2016. Um, but they have they have seen the light since then, and uh, now they're putting money and and creative effort into some very effective commercials uh, mm -hmm. on behalf of the Lincoln Project. And those commercials are, to me, very persuasive because they're evidence based. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not just rhetoric. So I wanted to examine with you, Barry, what you learned in this process, or putting it another way, what you are learning mm -hmm. <laughs> and an expectation of what you will learn going forward. Um, first, I mean, the, the, the big thing about making political calls like this is it's, um, it, it's, you, you feel rejected a lot of the time. It's, 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 a, it's not a good feeling. Can you talk about that? Sure. Well, uh, after you make the first half dozen, and they're hang-ups. It, it is a rejection, and you do first have that emotion, and, and then after a while, you really get immune to it. I mean, you get tired of saying, good evening, my name is Barry, da 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 it, it gets, you know, it, it, it's just a boring, dumb kind of a feeling. Yeah. But I don't, I, it, it, I still persisted. Because, you know, up until this discussion with you, I had lost track of the fact that I had not encountered one Trump supporter. And to be honest with you, Jay, that's what I was really looking for. Because uh, two days ago, when the delivery man for the rock salt company that, you know, for my water softener came, and he was there a year ago, and he was Trump. And, and, and we greeted each other, and he said, are you still Biden? And I said, yeah, you still Trump? He said, yeah. I, and then I, I worked on him again. <laughs> so I work on people with specific, and you know, I, if I ask them, what is it? What good things has Donald Trump done that make you want to support him? Yeah. And usually the answers are nonspecific, and uh, I won't want to say that they're not educated, but they're not really aware of what's going on as, as you and I are. Well, that's a, that is, that's a very interesting uh, takeaway from your experience, that, that uh, you were doing confirmation calls with people on the uh, DNC uh, Democratic Republic that registered voters. Um, so it's likely you're going to find either people who didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to take a robocall, um, or people who, um, you know, 
voted voted for Democrats and would vote for Biden. Mm -hmm. this, this, it's very it's not likely that you would hit a real Trumper there, and and so you could do your uh, advocacy with the Trumper. Exactly. Um, and this is a flaw, I think, in the system. I agree. It, it would it would be better to have a a, a smarter, if you will, a smarter list uh, where you can cross over a little bit, uh, where you can talk to like anybody at random. Uh, any voter anywhere in the country and 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 hit one where you could really have this conversation. Um, and, and I think that Democrats, for that matter, the Republicans would be better off if they had calls coming across the aisle, uh, because then you could have a chance to advocate. Now, that's an art form advocating uh, with a Trumper really? because <laughs> they got they got, you know, why do you like Trump? He's strong. Really? Is that is that how you you know, I mean, Stalin was strong. Uh, you, you want to do that? Is that what you want to do? <clears throat> so, I, you know, it's very interesting that you could get into a really fabulous conversation with someone, especially as a college professor, and take him down the path of logic and history and, and philosophy and all this and actually have a material effect on his perception of the world. But you didn't have that chance. I promise you this, Jay that uh, I'm on the good guy list with the DNC and all of this calling. And they're sending me emails after I make 10 or 20 calls and how did it go and whatever. I, I, if I have to work my way up the chain of command, I will get this suggestion that you have just made that I totally endorse into the system. And it might be a caller option. See, some callers, maybe a little afraid to take on a Trumper head on. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I, that's the one truly disappointing thing here. But I never had that opportunity to talk with a Trumper on the phone in California or Ohio or upstate New York in the same way I talked to a delivery person in my driveway or to someone else I meet in my normal comings and goings. You know, my recollection, Barry, is that <clears throat> the way the DNC gets the voter list they put in that program, uh, and for that matter, the Republican Party gets the voter list they put in their program, um, you buy them. You buy them. I don't think yeah. they're very expensive. They so have so the have DNC it, could buy Republican lists, and the Republicans could buy Democratic lists. Be far more effective. Absolutely. I will be going on and continuing to do my own one-on-one -on -one campaigning. And I will suggest to the DNC that they do what you and I agree should be done. It's missing. The other thing I, I wonder is, so what is gonna change people? What is it? And I also tell people, go on to YouTube and just Google Trump and some subject. And when you see many of the YouTubes where he says stupid things, or he changed, I mean, I don't know whether those are, uh, the ones I see are all hyper negative Trump. And that may be because YouTube is feeding me back what I previously looked. So I look at Randy Rainbow. I'm sure that's the case. And right. I get it automatically. But I, I wish I, I, I wish there were a way to get Trumpers to look at YouTube clips which truly portray Trump's tragic weaknesses. I, I, I agree with you. And I think if you had the chance, especially you, uh, if you had the chance to uh, you know, confront people on those things and answer you know, the reasons they give you for their, for their support of Trump, uh, you might be able to change a lot of minds. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's a practical problem, is that you're not going to be able to reach them. Uh, you could make the recommendation in DNC. I'm not sure that would stick or, or right. be implemented. And in right. the event, there's no time because these mail ballots are going out already uh, exactly. in the next few days. And people are going to, you know, given all the publicity, people are going to send them back right away instantly or drop them in one of those drop-off boxes. And so, you know, uh, you know Jean-Paul Sartre, les jeux sont faits. The, 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 the game is up. It's, it's already established. And the only, the only question here is how many people can actually uh, express their votes and get their votes counted. That's the, but I think most voters already know what they're going to do. 
And um, so. well, you got to give me a prediction, Barry. That we only have a minute left here. Give me a prediction. What do you think is going to happen? All of these things considered, including the bubbles, you know, and yep. the, um, the, the the failure to cross over. I believe that there are many more people out there in the country that are not counted by the polls who are pro Biden. I think Joe is going to be elected by whatever number of points, whether it's five points or seven points or 10 points, or maybe even more. I think it will be, I'm an optimist, Jay. And, and I think the right thing will happen and the same person will get in and the insane person. Uh, my fantasy there is that after he leaves the White House on January 20th, that uh, the New York uh, the State Police come and take him away and bring him to Rikers Island pending trial by Cyrus Vance. Okay, well, I think, you well, know, next time we speak, you're going to tell us how you really feel. <laughs> And, and I hope I hope we can speak, uh, you know, again soon, maybe after the election, uh, see how it came out. In the meantime, though, uh, why don't you see if you can um, uh, get one more telephone number, Barry Freeman, uh, and and call Trump himself and say hi <laughs> and tell him you're conducting a little poll. Uh, you'd like to address any concerns he has. Barry, you have a question uh, here. Is, is there any good way, the viewer question, is there any good way to persuade more young people to actually get out and vote or participate? It's a great question. Uh, it really is. I, there are no easy answer. The way I have done it for 34 years that I was a college professor is I would ask how many people are planning to vote and when 25% of the class raised their hand. I said, wait a second. Don't you realize if you don't vote, you may end up in, you know, I said either Vietnam or you may end up in Afghanistan or you may be somewhere. You need to follow the politics to protect your own life in addition to helping your country. So I try to personalize it to the people in the classroom. But it, it's a good question. Whoever gets the answer to that will be really helpful to America, to the betterment of our country. Okay. One more time, let's uh, put that uh, link on the screen. If people want to check in and, and participate in the, uh, the telephone call program, uh, they can go to this link. Meanwhile, we're out of time. Thank you, Barry. Great thank to you, talk to you. It's been exciting. I, 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 You're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aloha. Okay.